just through the trees there was British Rail's highest standard gauge tunnel at 1,313 feet above sea level. Its distance was 666 yards long on a tight radius curve of 22 chains. The line that went through it was nicknamed the Breakneck and Murder Railway. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Brecon Beacons for this episode of Hidden Railway Relics. The line itself was part of the Brecon and Merthyr Tidville Railway, travelling to and from its namesake. The site here, between the station and the tunnel entrance just up there, is used for the SAS fan dance, part of the SAS selection process. We started our journey on the northeast entrance. It protrudes slightly from the hillside and has softer embankments than the southern entrance, seen here, which nestles itself into the cutting. Right, it's time to get our torches on and have a look inside. So we've come just 20 yards into the tunnel. There's a stream that runs right through the middle, which obviously accounts for the waterlogged ends. Um, as you can see at this point, it's completely masonry surrounded all along the walls, all along the roof. I've got a feeling that changes as we go further through the tunnel. So let's go and have a look at that now. So now we're a little bit further into the tunnel. It's probably a good time to tell you about an incident that happened in 1947. It was deep in the winter and it was extremely snowy and a train was traveling from south to north and became stuck in the snow. It made it into the tunnel and subsequently it couldn't get out. So passengers were stuck in here for two days whilst they waited for the army to come and rescue them. It's also not actually the reason why it was called the Breakneck and Murder Railway. That was owing to a number of accidents in its earlier history. 1878, for example, a train was traveling north towards Brecon, just from here from the tunnel. The brake van wasn't of a good standard and the train went out of control, crashing, killing four people at the bottom of the hill. We came in from the eastern section. We're now heading towards the northern section. Um, it's getting very damp underfoot again. Um, what's amazing still to me is the amount of just sheer rock face, the amount of brick, the amount of random masonry, the amount of rock face which is just literally just filled in with brickwork. It's quite an array to build one tunnel. So here is a southern portal. As we said earlier completely encased in this cutting. Um, <clears throat> you'll also note up there a sign that says private keep out. The owners will not be responsible for any damage or injury caused. Um, we came in from the eastern entrance. There's no fence, no sign, anything at all uh, which states that. So I'm not sure why they've got one this end, but not one that end. Anyway, there we are, onwards through the water log. Torpen Tai Tunnel. Quite a mixture of architecture within it, masonry, brick, sheer rock face. Understandable why the other entrance, the eastern portal, is a grade two listed building. A last interesting point is the Brecon Mountain Railway from Torpen Tai, which is just 100 yards that way there, the station. They do want to extend this further, which means going through this tunnel and obviously dealing with a few of the problems that that comes with. So, Thanks for watching this episode of Hidden Railway Relics. Hopefully this has given you an insight into what an old Welsh tunnel looks like um, from the heart of the Brecon Beacons and from 1,313 feet high. Now, it's <laughs> Wellygate is gonna occur. <laughs>